Hey guys, Matthew here. In today's video, we're going to be going over my league starter for the upcoming 3.17 uh, Siege of the Atlas expansion and the Arch Nemesis League. So this is the build that I personally will be playing. Now, I know that there's a lot of information going around of whether this build is going to be fine or not in regards to the nerf because it got nerfed in multiple ways. So before anything else, I just want to address these nerfs. Uh, so the first nerf that happened was to Exsanguinate. Uh, essentially, two of the supports used, which were trap support and cluster or multiple traps, both got nerfed by roughly 20-ish percent, but Exsanguinate was buffed by about 30%. Therefore, the uh, net loss of damage is only about 10% damage on Exsanguinate as a clear skill, which is very, very minimal. Matter of fact, you could almost say inconsequential. Uh, Exsanguinate with Chain does so much damage, it has so much clear that you do not have to worry about this nerf whatsoever, even on the cheapest of cheapest budget, as I as I am using right now. Once you see my gear, you're going to be like, "Oh my god!" Like this shouldn't even be clearing T1 maps, uh, but it is. Not only that, it's not clearing just T1s; it's clearing T16s. Uh, so yeah, this is not a big deal. Now, about the elephant in the room. Now, of course, we were talking about the seismic trap nerf itself because this is what this build is all about, right? It's a single target oriented build, mostly made for bossing. This is why I'm going to be playing it. It's a very, very comfortable spot, boss killer. Now, I will say if you're not into this play style or if you don't like, if you don't want to play this build, you've already played it, whatever it is, I will have some other league starters uh, build guides that I will be making. This is just the one that I wanted to start with as it is the one that I will personally be playing and this is the one that I got the POAB done for uh, first. So let's talk about the actual seismic nerf itself. So excuse me for the flashbang here, uh, but this is essentially what is happening. So what you can see here on the outer ring circle uh, is essentially the area at which any of these small little circles can uh, can blow up. Now, the thing is, this area where any of the small circles can blow up is static. No matter what you do, this is always going to stay the same currently on Seismic Trap. However, these small little circles are actually dynamic. If you scale area of effect, these are going to become bigger, and therefore, as they blow up inside a circle which is static, as they can become bigger, there is going to be more and more overlap because this is not getting bigger right now what they're trying uh, what they're doing i believe when they're talking about the ratio is instead of these little circles uh increasing in size and basically being random inside of a static circle the statics uh, the circle is going to remain static however instead of these being random they are going to be uh, uh basically placed at a ratio in order for this circle here instead of overlapping on top of the same monster over and over so that it is a lot more uniform inside of the static circle at least that's my understanding of the upcoming nerf which would make sense because that is basically the exact same thing that they did with toxic rain as you scale area of effect these circles basically don't want to overlap with each other therefore they become spread out more and more and you are getting more coverage however less overlap now if this ratio is really 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 bad when it comes to area of effect essentially it means that you'll want to get no area of effect on your build or even perhaps negative area of effects and this could even potentially act as a buff to your single target if they made it so for example by using con uh, uh, concentrated effect that these circles are basically going to be uh, very, very close to each other. Even if these circles are smaller, if they are close to each other, this does not affect the amount of damage that they are doing. So as long as the boss is stationary on top of them, you might actually end up doing more damage despite the fact that this should be a nerf. But the actual numbers are yet to be seen because even in the patch notes, they were not shared with us. It seems like this is something that GGG is not going to be sharing, so we'll get to see it only when league starts now here's the upside of this entire change my build never cared for area of effect i am only ever getting the area of effect from my ascendancy and a little bit either on the tree as i get other things it's not because of the area of effect i'm just kind of getting it or cluster jewels 
which, by the way, this is something that may come as a surprise, but in my revisioned version of Seismic Trap compared to Last League, I have cut out the large cluster jewel uh, from the budget version. So, Last League, there was a large cluster using 8 passive physical, which was... Uh, came to my attention that was too expensive to put in a league starter. And not only that, this also allowed us to focus on being more tanky. Now, another thing that I want to talk about when it comes to being tanky is one massive change which is coming to this build, and this is the availability of the Blessing support. Now, unfortunately, I don't have access to the Blessing support right now, but essentially what this will do is let us run an aura for free, something that I will explain in detail later on when we hop into the POB. But just know that for the upcoming showcase, I do not have access to the Blessing support, therefore I do not have access to Determination. This is, of course, a great uh, detriment to my survivability, as I am only going to be able to use Grace uh, and uh, and uh, basically not taking advantage fully of my, de my Defiance banner. Now, I could put in Determination and take out Pride, but when you see the sort of gear that I'm running for this showcase, you'll see why I want Pride, because otherwise I really will be doing ZDPS, and Pride is something like 42% more damage at its, highest, uh, at its highest point. So, I just wanted to share that. Now, let's get right into the showcase, and then we'll hop into the POB and see what's changed, of course, and look at the multiple different POBs that I've prepared, both cluster versions, non-cluster versions, tanky versions, expensive versions. I've prepared, I think, five different POBs for this. Uh, so what I'll be doing for the showcase is a layer of the Hydra. This is uh, looks like it has turbo on it and reduced damage from crits, which is actually pretty bad for this build, as this is a critical build. This is actually the single worst modifier that you could get in order of making them uh, the monsters tankier is the reduced extra damage from crits especially because we are at awakener level eight so this 40 percent is going to be multiplied uh, so this might actually be a little rough okay we are also going to be doing this with guardians aid which means that we're going to have to essentially kill the boss twice uh, so again uh, i'm basically showcasing some pretty end game stuff just so get you guys can see what this build can do when it comes to end game content, no matter the budget. Okay, talking about budget, let's head into the actual gear because this it doesn't get much worse than this. Even in solo self found, by the time that you are in yellow maps, you should have probably found items that are going to be better than those. But here we go. So first off, I have a wand here with plus one level of all spells. This could be also physical. And a little bit of critical strike chance of spells with crafted spell damage. This is a wand that should cost you somewhere around 2 to 3 chaos. It's a basically 1.5 stat as the critical strike chance of spells. It's not a stat or, or a modifier which is uh, valued very highly unlike say critical strike multiplier or even high spell damage. And the next one is somehow even worse than that. This one has plus 1 all physical and 75% spell damage. But it is a driftwood, uh, driftwood wand, which means it has a spell damage implicit of 8%. So this only totals up to 80% spell damage, which is the equivalent of like a T3 or a T4 spell damage roll on a regular decent base. And I've only crafted Critical Strike Multiplier. This wand would not even be worth a single chaos, probably. That's how bad it is. Okay, next, the rest of our gear is going to be very simple. We are going to be rocking uh, life. Uh... Uh, resistances in order to be resistance capped and then spell suppression when we can in order to get 100% spell uh, suppression chance. Uh, this will require two spell suppression rolls and of course since we are running the deerstalker boots that means our gloves and our helmet needs to have spell suppression. Fortunately for us we get a lot of spell suppression on the tree so these spell suppression rolls do not have to be anything special. I think they could be only like 12% for each of these pieces and you would be good to go. Okay so otherwise the rings life and resistance life and resistance life uh, life and a little bit of critical strike multiplier on the amulet again we're not going to be using a helmet enchant because this is super budget the tabula is not you know a plus two corrupted tabula it's a regular tabula this entire setup because we're not running any cluster jewel in a leak start scenario would cost you a rough estimate of roughly one single exalt, considering that exalts would be around 50 or 60 C, a tabula is probably about 20 to 25, and most of the other rares are just a couple chaos. Uh, and uh, yeah, add it all up together, and you've got about one exalt spent in a day one scenario. And we are about to do a double boss layer of the Hydra with Maven on top of it, because why not? Now, I'm not 
guaranteeing that I'm going to stay alive for the entirety of the fight. You do need to remember that I am not able to use determination, but I'll do my best. Okay. Now she cannot so, escape her true in terms of clearing, we're just going to throw exsanguinate traps and for these very pesky, you know, tanky rares, maybe throw a seismic trap on top of them. But that is typically not going to be necessary. And I'll talk about the single target setup once we get to the boss. So, again, we're just kind of going to throw our traps uh, in front of us and let them detonate as we keep moving forward. And this is essentially the play style. Now, you have to remember that this map currently has 51% reduced extra damage from critical strikes, which essentially means that I'm if it's around about 50% of my actual damage as I'm losing roughly 50% damage from this mod alone. And as you can see, my pseudo 5-link exsanguinate is still clearing these maps just fine. So with the upcoming 10% damage nerf, this is not really going to change no anything deals. to the uh, grand scheme violence. of this build Stop at all whatsoever. We have more important so we're going to just go ahead and try to focus on getting to the end of the map. I'm not really too interested in uh, messing around with betrayal monsters. However, uh, I'm pretty sure by the time that we get to the end of the map, those things Even are going to be dead. Weapon, well, so there you go. As mentioned... Uh, they're, they've died by just following me as I threw a couple uh, seismic traps behind me as I walk, was walking forward. So, the damage clearly is up there, but we'll see exactly what this is all about once we actually get to the boss at the end of the map. Okay, now it would also be a lot safer if we did have access to our determination, but still, as you can see, it is a pretty, you know, safe playstyle. We are getting Grace, we are getting De Defiance Banner, we do have Cap Spell Suppression overall, especially, uh, and of course our Steel Skin, so it makes it for a relatively safe playstyle. Now let me put a portal just in case I die due to the uh, turbo and the massive damage reduction. But what I'm going to do here in terms of how to play this build is I'm going to walk up to the boss, debuff him with my Bear Trap, so throw that under him as close as possible debuff with assassin's mark and then after that we are just going to put our seismic trap right under the boss and try to focus on just dodging whatever ability they're throwing at us in order for us to not die which is what's so comfortable about this build you don't really have to be too too tanky when you can just dodge things manually by just walking around and then we will also want to make sure that we throw exsanguinate traps now even despite the fact that Exsanguinate Trap doesn't really do any damage to our single target, the reason why we do want to use it is in order to proc Master Sapper and High Explosive to get access to Power and Frenzy Charges because our Seismic Traps are, have a very long cooldown and with only 15% chance to, get to, to proc a Frenzy or a Power Charge, you need to be throwing lots of traps. By spamming our Exsanguinate Traps while we do so, we are going to make sure that we get all of our charges and also that we proc the maximum value of our Pyromaniac Ascendancy, which is giving us up to 10% life regen per second. So let's go ahead and get into the single target showcase. And then after that, it's going to be all about the POB. So again, we're going to walk up, throw our um, traps under him, and then just kind of focus on throwing some exsanguinates. Now again, I'm, I'm rocking about half of the, my actual damage available on the build right now. Uh, so this is definitely not going to be the fastest, you know, guardian, shaper guardian kill you've ever seen. And not only that, we are going to have to kill these guys twice as they are going to be respawning. Oh, this might be dangerous. Thank God for spell suppression. Uh, but as you can see, even despite all of that, even despite the fact that I'm essentially at half my damage effectiveness on a shoestring budget of less than a single exalt in a least start scenario... We are still absolutely murdering these things, and we are even able to face tank a decent amount of these mechanics as we are spell suppression cap, which means that these uh, these different mechanics are only dealing about half the damage to us that they should be dealing. So pair that with all of our other defensive layers, and we make for a pretty tanky character. Now, if you could add in determination on top of that, it would get even crazier. But yeah, there's just not very many League starter builds that can do what I just did with this sort of budget. And this is why I am personally uh, going to be going over to this build. No matter what they're doing to this ratio of the AoE, I don't think that it's going to be too big of a deal as I don't care for AoE when scaling this build, especially with the revised version. Okay, so let's head into the POB. First off, I need to talk about the notes. Under the notes section, you will find exactly how to level this build. 
the step-by-step -step guide, the ascendancies. Of course, we are going to be helping Alira. You will see exactly where to buy uh, the or where to buy or where to acquire the skill gems uh, that you will need. It is basically going to take your hand from the beginning of the game all the way up to the very end game, where you're going to respec or swap into physical because initially you are going to be elemental. Now, of course, I've also prepared many different trees which are going to gear up your progression as you are playing through the game, making your way up to once again when you're going to swap over to physical around level 75 is pretty much my estimation of pro probably where I would kind of uh, where I would do so because you'll probably start lacking damage on the elemental version and then you should also uh, have the currency to buy yourself a couple chaos wands and maybe a tabula and that's really all you need to get going alongside your deer stalkers. So once you've got about 10 chaos in your stash, plus uh, either a five link or a tabula available, you're basically good to go all the way up to guardian maps, believe it or not. And then of course we have got the level 90 POB, which has cut off the cluster jewel, as I mentioned previously in the video, in order to get the cost down that much more. But this also allowed me to move away from the acrobatics version of this build, which was in my previous build guide, where I was focused on getting about 50% spell dodge or 40%. Instead, I'm going all the way up on the right side to the Scion Life Wheel. I'm dropping the acrobatics and instead getting Mage Bane, getting the skill effect duration, getting a bunch more life. And this is allowing us to very easily get spell suppression capped without any real investment on gear, except two rolls that don't even need to be good doesn't need to be, you know, at Ziri's uh, step or anything like that. So this is honestly probably about as cheap as it gets. And with the sort of uh, with the sort of defensive layers that we have, even on a tabula, we make for a pretty tanky character. You're not going to be dying very often on this as long as you're not literally face tanking everything uh, on your screen. So yeah, that's pretty much what it looks like in terms of the end game tree. Now, uh, quickly, in terms of the links, you'll find all of that over here. Uh, but I just want to uh, explain a couple things. So none of these links are too, too interchangeable, except for one of them. Uh, and that is Trap and Mind Damage. Trap and Mind Damage is very flexible on this build. Uh, because uh, if we look at the way that Seismic Trap scales, it scales with Trap Throwing Speed. Trap Throwing Speed is going to dictate how fast it pulses. And how fast it pulses is essentially a multiplier to our damage. But Trap and Mind Damage has a less trap throwing speed, which is essentially like saying 10% less pulses or 10% less damage, if you will. And this is a big deal. So this is totally interchangeable with something like increased critical damage. Or if they actually went through and made the AoE like reverse scaling, we could even go conk effect in order to get as much overlap as humanly possible. But for now, I typically go with Trap and Mind Damage. Uh, uh, going with Increased Critical Damage is something that I will consider later on when I buy a Skin of the Lords or a Skin of the Loyal. Because at that point, you know, socket colors do matter and it's possible that one is significantly cheaper than the other or one exists and the other doesn't. So that's where you'll need to be a little bit more flexible. But overall, you'll be looking at either... Three green, two reds, and a blue, or two greens, two reds, and two blues, which are typically colors which are not too, too expensive. Okay, otherwise, the, the auras that we're going to be running are Grace, Determination, Defines, Banner, and Skitterbots. Now, this is really nice because all because our traps are running on Life Tap and Exsanguinate costs life already. It allows us to reserve a massive portion of our mana, almost the entirety of our mana pool, uh, uh, without actually needing to worry about uh, having mana available for the build. This is super nice, something that not every build can do. Now, you'll see this and you might be wondering why there is like negative 200 mana on the build and you'll see this pride increase duration which isn't linked to anything and wonder why that is, what's going on here. So this is just a placeholder for the time being until POB updates with the blessing support. Now, if you're not aware, the Blessing Support is essentially going to allow you to, uh, instead of reserving an aura, turn it into a flat cost. So I'm guessing that the cost is going to be the same as the reservation. So looking at this pride, for example, you can see here that this reserves 36% 36, 36 of my mana. But because I don't have 36% of my mana available, only 8% in the game, I would not be able to reserve pride. 
Matter of fact, even with this blessing support, if it was to cost 36% of my mana and I only have 8% available, I would not be able to cast it either, right? Even if it was a buff as a non-permanent aura. But there is a very cool tech which I've uh, mentioned in a previous video, uh, which is the uh, the skills cost no mana or life while focused tech, uh, tech meaning technology, if you will, or technique. And this allows you to basically use this pride once it'll be linked to blessing. And instead of costing you 36% mana, which is not available, it'll cost you nothing, which is really, really nice. Now we are pairing this up with increased duration because right now, if it's the same as March of the Legion, the baseline uh, duration of the auras is only something like 11 seconds. So this is going to make it that much better. And because we are a seismic trap build getting the uh, skill effect duration cluster nodes over here uh, we are basically going to have probably somewhere around 25 to 30 second or so uptime on these uh, the this pride buff which is more than enough for uh, for, for you to one tap a boss now for, for for those who don't know the focus mechanic the way that it works is that you press the button focus is going to appear on your bar whenever you have uh, any item in your uh, on your character which has the while focused and when you press it it is going to last for four seconds so during that four seconds nothing is going to cost you life or mana and after that it's going to go on an eight second cooldown which means that it cycles every 12 second but remember what i said you're going to be getting over 20 second duration easily of these auras therefore you're basically going to be able to have permanent uptime if you want Personally, I'm not going to use this permanently because I don't think you need the damage for mapping. It's something that I'll eat, uh, I'll proc as I get into a boss room or, you know, let's say I do like a Maven or a Cyrus. This is where this tech is really going to shine as it's going to allow us to get literally 42% more damage on our build for just about free, right? There's no real cost invested other than a, a, a craft on an amulet and a couple sockets, which... We just so happen not to need on this build, which is even greater. Otherwise, Flame Dash Arcane Surge, just kind of a no-brainer movement support. Flame Dash costs mana, which procs our Arcane Surge, which is, you know, a respectable 13% more damage. You would definitely want to have this up when you are boss killing. Assassin's Mark, now a really nice quality of life buff, which is coming to Assassin's Mark in the upcoming league, is that it is going to be permanent. Whenever you hit Assassin's Mark on an enemy, it is just going to stick there until it's dead which is something which is really, really nice instead of needing to refresh it on tankier bosses. Uh, because whenever you do need to refresh it, it means that you are going to be sitting, standing still for even just a second, and that could be the difference between life or death. And overall, it's just less buttons to press, so I'm really happy with this change. Okay, next, in our boots, we are going to have our Exsanguinate setup. Uh, Exsanguinate linked to trap and mine damage uh, chain and multiple traps because the Deerstalkers is giz giving us level 11 trap, which is essentially giving us pseudo 5 link. And this, again, is more than enough for T16 clearing, even with 51% reduced damage from crits. Uh, and finally, we'll use Bear Trap as another debuff, which is somewhere around 20% more damage. So you throw that at the feet of the boss. It's going to proc, even if it doesn't, you know completely slow them the way that it should the increased damage is still there and we have steel skin on increased duration which i personally like having on my left click uh, as i'm walking around the map it is always going to keep refreshing in terms of the gear there's nothing to write home about uh, this is the same sort of gear that you saw in the previous showcase you know a tabula deer skin uh you know uh the rest is just life and resistances when it comes to the super super budget setup now, like I said earlier, I've prepared multiple different POBs, so let me give you guys a quick rundown on what you'll find in the description down below. The initial one is going to be the League Star POB with all the leveling notes and with the um, the the actual um, tree progression and all that good stuff. Next, you'll find a low budget version, but with a large cluster. So the difference here is that we are giving away roughly 350 life for about 1.4 million damage. Our damage goes from 4.8 million to 6.2 million for a, a total investment of basically 350 life as we are dropping the entirety of the life on this side of the tree and instead going back to a large cluster jewel. Now this is definitely something that you can do um, even with this level of defense as we are running Defiance Banner alongside Determination and Jade 
uh, or, or sorry, not Jade, I mean Grace, a Jade Flask and a Granite Flask with Armor and Evasion on them, uh, respectively, you are going to get some good defensive numbers. So it's not the end of the world to cut out a little bit of life if you're going for some damage. Um, now, when it comes to crafting these, these require item level 50. And the easiest way to craft them is either Jagged Fossil or Physical Rerolls with Harvest, which is typically what I would do. So I would buy one of these bases as fast as I can because they typically go up very quickly, but initially they're very cheap. And then as soon as I have it, anytime I encounter a Harvest, which has Physical Rerolls or Physical Reforges, I would throw it in there and just kind of keep rerolling until I get three, uh, three Notables and any of them, they don't matter. Whatever it is, it's going to be good enough. Next, in terms of the medium clusters, there's basically only one option, and that is Guerrilla Tactics and Set and Forget. Uh, my recommendation when it comes to crafting these clusters is to uh, buy the base of four or five passives. Now, I believe these require item level 50, uh, and once you do that, uh, you are going to use every single Reforge, except for Fizz, right? Every single Reforge that you come across in Harvest on these, uh, because... The, the cool thing about trap clusters is that they have really high weighting. Uh, so typically, every single time I do this, by the end of the first day, I have self-crafted both my trap or minor clusters by using every single reforge I come across in Harvest. So it works quite well, and you don't have to worry about, you know, alt regal or trying to go out of your way to make it work. And of course, if you get a set of modifiers which are worth anything uh, decent that you don't particularly need, uh, like a set for miners, for example, you could just sell it, buy another base. These are extremely, extremely cheap. Okay, the next POB is when we were going to step it up a notch. You know, that 6 million is some child's play. It's time to get to some real damage. And this is where we start investing a little bit more into the build. And we reach 11.5 million damage. Not only that, our defenses are about just the same, if not better than they used to be. As you can see, we are getting 36,000 evasion and 29,000 armor alongside our capped spell suppression. Very, very tanky character. Now, at this point, we're going to be rocking cold iron points, which are going to be our endgame weapon. Uh, we're going to get a seismic enchant, which is going to be obviously our go to. Uh, not necessary, but very, very nice. Uh, skin of the Lords or Skin of the Loyal, they are both just as good in terms of defensiveness. But Skin of the Lords does have plus two, which is a little bit better, about 10% more damage than a Skin of the Loyal. Uh, so if you can get the right socket colors on a Skin of the Lords, I would prioritize it over Loyal. Uh, but Loyal can typically be corrupted with some good implicit, so it really is up to you. Otherwise, life and resistance across the board, except that we are going to be moving Deerstalkers away for Itziri Step. Also, a zero step is, is very often enchanted, so it's pretty easy to get some with critical strike chance if you haven't crit recently. And because we are a trapper build, we never ever crit. Therefore, this is up at all times, which is basically the equivalent of having a diamond flask up at all times for free on your on uh, as an enchant on your pair of boots. Now, this means that we will need to get another pseudo file link somewhere else, so we are going to go with shaper gloves here. Now, shaper gloves can have either a trap. Uh, trap support or trap and mine damage support it really is up to you or whatever is available with uh, what you'll go for now because we get uh, a zero step which have a lot of chance to spell suppress it means that our gloves don't actually need chance to spell suppress so we can just focus on getting a pair of gloves uh, with you know the actual trap or trap and mine damage support and whatever else you need life resistance attributes or whatever okay otherwise we're going to still be rocking life and res for the rest of the gear and one thing, though, is I put plus one dexterity on the amulet. Now, this is something that might be, that, that would probably actually be the, the most expensive or the hardest item to come across in the entirety of the POB uh, on this budget, but uh, definitely something that is pretty affordable, or at least historically has been pretty affordable, but we'll see in the upcoming league as plus one is no longer an influence modifier, but anybody can get it as it is just a global mod. Otherwise, the jewels are just life and multi, nothing special there. Okay, and if you want to go a step further, you can take this, this medium budget and go with basically the exact same thing, but with a cluster. Again, our damage is going to go up yet again. We are started at 11 million or whatever, 11.5, and we are all the way up to 16.4 million damage. Now, of course, we do have to give up roughly 350 life for this to happen, but our evasion and armor are still going to be staying the same and our damage is going to shoot up quite a bit. I mean, at 16 million damage, 
this is the sort of damage required to do things like feared carries you know kill awakener 8 or kill maven within a few seconds like this sort of damage is truly insane as you can see we are dealing 1 million damage per explosion and this is per small explosion on our seismic trap which is dealing many 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 of these small explosions uh, so overall this is a very very solid uh, um, sorry setup once you have a little bit more currency and you're willing to uh, sacrifice a tiny bit of survivability for a lot more damage but yeah that's pretty much concludes my updated guide on seismic trap again if you have any questions feel free to Ask, him, uh, ask them in the comments section below. I'll do my best to answer all of them. But personally, I'm not worried whatsoever for the upcoming nerf. I do think that no matter what happens to it, because I don't really care for the AoE scaling at all already, it's something that is inconsequential to me. Even if I end up losing, say, 20 or 30% damage, as you saw what we can do on literally less than a single exalt worth of gear, uh, imagine with this sort of gear, even if, if we remove 20 or 30% damage from that, it's not even uh, comparable, right? Going from 4 million to 16 plus million DPS. So anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Before I go, as always, I do want to say a huge thank you to my supporters. So like him, Hamad, Max, Georgie, Rascoro, Stan, Brandon, welcome back, Thomas, Nate, the Great Master, Alex, the other Alex, Tim, Mercury, Johnny, Scott, as well as, of course, Nailed, Kevin, Killer Kev, Dubstep, the other Alex, Spitizen, and Xenjeric. Anybody else who supported me in the past and anybody else who wishes to remain anonymous. So, I'll see you guys in the next guide. Peace.